No. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wow. Are you freaking kidding me? Crofts are in it. Absolutely. I ain't scared. <laughs> The world has changed. Wow. Very nice. Whoa. Won't hit the heater core. Good. There goes the finger. Damn it. <laughs> We're getting there. Repeat that. I'm nervous. Ooh. ooh. Yes. <laughs> Butter. <laughs> they're in space shuttle. Oh, gosh. Off the grid. Flex it, baby. Um, Look at that. It looks sad. With a bad eye. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked out. Ram air. Horse powers. <laughs> oh gosh. Break a rip. What's that noise? Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We are back with our 74 Dodge Mini Winnie motorhome. This has been an over two year project now for us. We got other things going on, other events, other projects, but we are back. We really want to get it going. If you've watched the whole series, then you know we had a lot of trouble with the factory Dodge computer. Best I can tell from watching other videos and researching, I started with the wrong computer and harness, which was a Dodge Durango. I've been told since then, you should really use just a Ram 1500 computer and harness. I might have had better luck, but I've also heard some bad things about those. So what we're going to do though, we're going to bypass all that factory stuff because anything stock like that has security features in it where if it thinks it's stolen or it thinks something's wrong, it'll shut you down. But we don't want that, do we? No. no. We want to get this thing running. We want to get it where we can camp in it. Yeah. Uh, we already had to skip our summer trip in this thing. We'd like to take a trip in it this winter maybe. But let me show you what parts we've got to try to finally get this thing where it is running and driving and dependable. So if you don't know, this is a 74 Dodge B300 van, Mini Winnie. We took the 360 out of it and now it's in that Gremlin right there actually. And this is a 5.9 Magnum out of a 99 Dodge Durango. 46 RE overdrive automatic transmission. So this thing's fuel injected overdrive. It's got all the cool modern features. It's a 19 foot motor home. We completely remodeled the inside of it. As you can see, it's got power, it's got an inverter. Big thank you to Rec Pro for their help with this project, but it's got a working microwave, refrigerator. Makes a great break room in this shop. AC, heat, everything works. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna switch to a Holly Terminator X computer. Now, if you've watched our channel, now you know we have this on some of our other projects. The Super Coupe has this same computer in it. Yeah, it is ran flawlessly. That thing's a hog leg. The nice thing about the Holly Terminator X, years ago, you used to have to buy the computer. Then you had to buy gauges. Then you had to buy wideband. And you had to wire it all together. Well, the Terminator X has all that with it. So this comes with a digital dash. So we'll have our gauges. We'll know our speed. We'll know our oil pressure, temperature, volts, everything we need to know. It has a built-in map sensor if you're running all motor like we are. So don't even have to use the factory map sensor. It comes with a full harness. Like I said, it comes with a wide band. It comes with everything you need to get it up and running. So it saves you all that money on gauges and junk and wide band. When I did my first EFI swap, I bought like a $400 wide band on top of buying the computer and harness. To make this thing a little bit simpler to wire in, we could definitely use our factory cam and crank sensors, but Holly actually sells a dual sync for this thing. So this plugs directly into the Terminator X harness. I just wanted to get away from anything factory that might mess up because a lot of the comments we saw with the factory computer stuff was saying cam sensor, you know, it might be a problem. So this is gonna take the place of our cam and our crank sensor. We'll try to crank it up here because it does run from time to time. It had a miss when we were driving it. Everything in the system's new. New plugs, wires, distributor was new. Everything was new except for the injectors. So we're gonna replace the injectors with a set of Excel 30 pounders. If I would have known we were gonna do all this, I would have put a hog leg cam in this thing. I'm just saying. Yes, sir. I'm gonna get my old wire cutters out and we're gonna start cutting away at this thing. And hopefully by the end of this video, we're gonna have a dependable, running, driving, tunable, no security features computer in this thing. And we're gonna take her for her first real run and see how she does. Woo! Yeah. I'm ready to paint. All right. Well, <laughs> at least she's on board. It's a completely stock 5.9 Magnum, which makes more power than the old school 70s Smog Era 360 that came in this thing. Let's see if she starts today. See how it's running there? Okay, well, 
she gave it her best there but we've had multiple issues with this thing we've had it where it just wouldn't do anything when we test drove it the last time with this stock computer it shut down and just wouldn't do anything Ridiculous. so we've had a bunch of different issues when it does run it seems to have a miss like you saw right there that's a little extreme it does clear up better once you're going down the road but hopefully with our new injectors it's going to take that mist out of it it should be a lot easier to wire than what we did before because how many days wa did we spend oh i'm not even it was really bad seven maybe it was like a whole week. It was like yeah. a whole on the wire. You know? Yeah. We did every single wire. Yeah. Over the summer break, me and Wass sit down and went through every one of these wires. Every so, one. hey, we're about to cut all that out. Thank you. Well. <laughs> if we would have just knew well you know i wanted to be like junkyard about it and try a stock computer and it bit me no you made a good effort we did give it a good try Valiant didn't we effort. Mm -hmm. and now that people know what not to do <laughs> yeah we're teaching you what not to do all right let's get to cutting wires Woo! i am planning on even getting rid of this which is the factory durango fuse block that's part of the reason why i had to put this off is because I spent so much time on this. I just can't just tear it right back out. I had to put some time between me and the project because I don't feel quite as bad now. If you're worried about that, we gave up too soon on this or something. We talked to people that worked at Dodge and helped design this computer. And they even told us that you can't permanently delete out the security stuff. You can delete it out. It can come back if it senses something's wrong. So I'm sure it works great in a factory application, but for what we're doing here, it uh, seems to be a problem, child. Well, there's our factory computer right there. I don't even know what we're gonna do with it now. Shoot it. <laughs> we probably should. This thing even had a battery temp sensor, which a lot of people in the first video, when we got it to run and it shut off, said, it has to see that battery temperature, which who needs to know your battery's temperature, really? You'll figure that out later. Yeah, when it blows up in your face, you can figure that out. Yeah, this is just a, a mess is what it is. We're gonna start labeling. Wall's gonna be my labeler, I think. And we are going to start cutting wires. We got a couple major powers and grounds here where I'm hooking. I'm gonna try to keep it all together as much as I can. We actually zip tied this thing up pretty nice, mm -hmm. if I do say so myself surprising if we ever get this thing done we literally have touched every part of this thing we've done suspension we've done brakes we've rebuilt the engine we had the transmission rebuilt the we walls, went through the, the rear end. i mean we have went through everything so if we can't ever get it done we're gonna have like a brand new rv we just gotta get there these are our two power wires are basically our ignition power so one of these has power and cranking only and one has power when the key's on we're gonna have to reuse these definitely when we power up this thing label that one ignition power okay mm -hmm. that way, I'm literally just saying. there may have been a mouse run out of the motorhome probably in that small one ah! where's he at where is he she don't know you don't hear his little feet? You didn't hear his little feet either. I swear I heard his little feet. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. You saw a male? He's right there. <laughs> Mom! Guys, if you watch our videos, and you know on a recent trip out west, I lost my wallet at the motel room. And there is nothing worse than that. Losing all your stuff that's important to you, that's really hard to replace, even money, cards, everything. We could have been completely stuck out there. And all of that could have been avoided if I would have had this new product from Groove Life, the Groove Wallet Go. It's sleek, it takes up almost no room in your pocket, which if you're like me, you can't stand having stuff in your pockets. It'll hold your cash, it'll hold your license, your cards. It'll even hold your Dollar General gift cards. I mean, how cool is that? They also have their regular Groove Wallet, which holds six cards plus cash. It has RFID protection, and they're also MagSafe. The Groove Wallet Go works with iPhone 12, 13, and 14, and all their products come with a 94-year no BS warranty, so it's the last wallet you're ever gonna need. You've seen me wearing the Groove Belt for months now. I absolutely love this thing. They also sell lots of other products like watch bands, rings, AirPod cases, and much more. It's a business based right here in Tennessee that was started in Alaska. It's always good to support local businesses when you can. So the fact that they're from Tennessee is a big deal to me right here in my home state. They've also been recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. It's time to bring your wallet into the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com slash SleeperDude for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my link, GrooveLife.com slash SleeperDude for 20% off your order. One last time, that's GrooveLife.com slash SleeperDude for 20% off your order. Big thank you to GrooveLife for helping support our channel and sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. 
despite a week's worth of work trying to clean up this harness it's still pretty much a big bundle of wires right here it's got so much more harness than that holly harness does this harness has two auction sensors it's looking for a catalytic converter it's looking at emissions things things that don't matter for a vehicle this old we're cutting our wires here for our fuel pump and our transmission cooling fan in the back because we were powering all that through the Durango harness before. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug our fuel injectors. So these are EV1 style injectors, which is very common size. And that's what our Holly harness has as well. So you could, if you had good injectors, you could just plug them right in. It's just a universal MPFI kit. And they also make a trans harness that plugs right into the 46RE to run it. Makes it super simple. This is our factory map sensor, which we're not gonna be using since the Holly has a built-in one. Our factory TPS sensor, that's one of the few things I've gotta figure out how to wire in, because we're probably gonna have to repin it to this plug. And then idle air control, I believe the Holly has the exact same plug. Make one that says TPS, because this is one plug we're gonna to have to reuse. Wait, like, put it around it? Make it first, then we'll put it around, how about that? How do you make it, how do you do that? Just right on the side first, then you just tape it. You can't TPS. just do that, no, you can't do that, Dad. You have to put it on That's the there. thing. No, that is the thing. Just, how am I supposed to close it? You don't close it to ride it. Yes, you, you do. ride it and then you close oh, what it. What are you doing? On there. Look, look. Oh Let me show you this magic. Right. I'm done with yeah. this. I'm done. Let me see it. Here, watch. It's incredible. You ready? No. You ready? I don't want to watch. Watch this. I P S. And then you wrap it around it. It works really good like that. See right here? I don't want to hear your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Does all of those wires go to the OBD2 plug? Yeah. We don't need that where we're going. Exactly. All right, I can just cut all those off. We're going to take the edge tuner that we put on this thing and put it on Mom's Yukon now, which I don't know if that's a good idea now that I said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> that may not be the best idea. That's our overdrive off switch we don't need. Ralphie, pull this line through there. We don't need these aftermarket gauges at all. So okay, you can go put that on the shelf. We'll save those for another project. Hey, you can unscrew this OED2 plug from the dash, take it out completely. Come in so bright. Hi. 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 Been rolling in the dirt. It's gonna power in the ground. It's, I think, oh, the power goes right here. All right. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. Wrap that up, wall. Oh, that was perfect. Thank you. It's never been better. Get out of my new grass. I just planted it. It's barely growing. No, no, no. Go find other grass. There should be a plug there. That one goes up somewhere. There should be like a button to push in on that plug. Give it a little wiggle, 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 wiggle. It won't wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, well, I think I got them on hook, so. You got them all? Yeah. I'm gonna start pulling. Y'all tell me if I get stuck on something. I think I got everything unhooked. I think it's just heavy. Woo. That's so many. How did I ever even go through these and get it to run? I don't know. It was awful. Wow. All right, what's this? We got one more thing here. I think it goes to the AC compressor, maybe. I'll snip it on this side of the plug. This one more. Okay. Now we're wrapped around the flower table. Oh. We're going to get it around the tables, Ralphie. Mm. You got some painting squeeze? Yep. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. It took me a long time because I had to wait for all of them to dry. So. Yeah. Oh, good job. Oh, my God. This is such a bird's nest. Even after us. We cut, like, every wire out of it we thought we didn't need to know. This harness literally went from, like, headlight to headlight on it the rainbow. All right, that's it. There you go. A week's worth of work <laughs> of making this thing. You're done. Let's compare it to our Holly harness. There's a difference in our harnesses, so. Mm. Much more simplified, a lot less headache to it. You can see everything is clearly labeled already for what it goes to. I don't think that'll take as long at all. It won't take nearly as long. And we're not even counting the gauges we got to take out by doing this. It's gonna be a lot nicer deal, a lot more clean install. This will basically run anything from your lawnmower all the way up to your <laughs> Corvette. We're calling the winner of our Holly gift receipt giveaway. Hello? Leave a message for 435. Hey Shasta, this is Josh from the Sleeper Dude channel. Oh, here they are. Hello? Yeah, is this Shasta? No. 
This is Josh from the Sleeper Dude channel. Is it Josh? This is Josh. Holy <laughs> This is her husband. <laughs> well, we wanted to call you and tell you that you're the winner of the five hundred dollar Holly gift certificate. Are you, are you freaking kidding? No, you're the winner. <laughs> oh well i'm glad you liked it that's awesome we're gonna also throw in some stickers and some t-shirts and stuff yeah perfect yeah okay we just wanted to call and let you guys know <laughs> hey, I don't either, man. I get it. We love all you guys. Yeah, we watch you guys every week. That is awesome. All of our kids watching, and wow. <laughs> this is exciting. Well, thank you for watching the channel, and thanks for ordering through our website. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're actually starting another giveaway. Maybe you can win again, or maybe somebody else will win. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. How cool is that, huh? That was awesome. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to answer. I know. Yeah, they called crazy. me back. You so. know they're like jumping up and down. Like, <laughs> I would be, yeah. I know, right? Well, you can win too. Go to thesleeperdude.com. Every order is an entry to win. Everybody has an equal shot at it. So go check it out. While we've got all that harness out of our way, we're going to go ahead and swap out our injectors. And this is the only thing I could think of that would cause a miss considering... Everything else in the system is brand new. I mean, they were 250,000 mile injectors, so. Let's make a mess and smell like gas the rest of the evening. All right, let's pop them up out of there. These are slightly bigger injectors than what these old ones were, so if we ever did want to make more donkeys, we could. We're gonna try to make the smallest mess as possible with this gasoline, because mama don't like gas smell. Nope. <sighs> Let's see our new injector, Ralphie. Looks like the same deal, doesn't it? Yeah. Except for nice and new. You got something else already? Yeah. It was oh, very cool. That's cool. Because I, I put three different, like, the flowers on the trees look good. Clouds, flowers, and the grass. So, it looks and good. The sea, and the moon, so. Good job. I think that was my fastest one. <laughs> She's quick. She ain't gonna do nothing that takes a long time. We're gonna oil these up here before we drop them in, or you'll paint your O-ring. You don't want to paint your O-ring, do you? No, no. Ralphie, these are the same brand of injectors that are in your Corvette. Remember? I knew it. I, knew it. I, I noticed the box. They just pop right I'm in there. Smart. Oh, they You gonna stick a tape on me? What'd you do? Kick me on my back? Bad monkeys and tube. That's what my back says. Yes. yes. Thank you. Man, oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. oh, that one was to you. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see hair on it. There you go. I think it popped right in. Appears to be the same height and everything. Can we see it? He's getting brave about Yeah, he, the used, shop. he wouldn't come in here at first. Hi, Betty. Good kid. Now I'm going to go ahead and get all of our basic sensors installed. So we have a factory manifold air temp sensor and we could definitely put a different plug in on this and we could rescale it for the Dodge sensor. But just to make it simpler on us, I already have a Holly manifold air temp sensor here. It plugs directly into this. And what I'm going to do is just screw it into the back of our hat here for our throttle body because it just needs to know what the temperature of the air is going into the engine. Does that look right to you? That's all right, good. The thread size on the Dodge one on the intake is quarter inch pipe, and this is three eighths pipe. That's why I didn't just unscrew the Dodge one and screw this in. I really don't want to drill and tap my intake since it's already installed. It'd be easy if it was off the car, but okay, I almost drilled it out too big and just talking there didn't a perfect fit. That ought to be good. Will you give that a thorough cleaning for me? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Talk uh, about a blow through the car, bro. I know, you could probably run some boosty boys on that, huh? Same thing here with the oil pressure sending unit. This is a factory Mopar one. It just probably has different scaling than this. This is a Holley zero to 100 PSI pressure transducer. So it'll read zero to 100 PSI on any sort of fluid. You could run this for oil pressure, fuel pressure. I think even your dome pressure on your wastegate or any of that stuff. This guy right here just screws right back in, same threads. That way it gives it a signal that we don't have to rescale. 
Well, are you ready to go camping? I heard you're a big yeah. hiker. Actually, is what I heard. I don't know who told you that, but there's a line to you. I have some early video footage <laughs> that says, Hiking, so fun, I wanna go. Remember that? Yeah, until I hiked Bryce Canyon, that made me hate all hiking whatsoever. <laughs> it's not that bad. It depends on the weather, honestly. Yeah, this time of year would be much better. Yeah, if it was like this, I probably could do it. But it was hot. It was. It was awful. This is our injector harness, and that should sit right back here and plug right into these injectors. This harness is set up for a small block Chrysler or small block Chevy, so it has the actual cylinder numbers on them. Mine says six and eight, which is right here. Wait, so seven would be on the far this one, right? The back, the farthest. It says five and seven right there. You have Marge Jr. What? Wait, which way is it going uh, on, She's cross-threading it. Right, I'm not cross-threading it. It ain't going on there. That notch goes through the bottom. Yeah, I was doing it like that, but I could And then you just push and it'll click. What? Look, it went on and clicked. Yeah, I, I'm not. You just got to get them muscles out. I don't have no muscles. I'm not trying to You don't have muscles? No, nothing. There's nothing there. So here's our teeny tiny factory coolant temp sensor. I got a GM style sensor just so it would plug right into this harness. Obviously, we don't have room enough down there because that's eighth inch pipe and this is three eighths. But I've got one more spot I think I can put this in the cooling system. So on the top of our radiator, there's a big plug here. I'm hoping it will fit in there. Is that the same threads? Let me see. Absolutely. Push that. Right here. I gotta do this for the mini bike because we don't have a gas tank. So this is mom's mini bike that her gas tank got stole for something else. I did not expect that to screw straight into the radiator. I really didn't. That was a score. That was because we did not have enough room in the intake for that. The one thing I am going to cut and repin here is the throttle position sensor because it has a built-in one that I can't just bolt on something else. So we're going to use the factory one. Looks like the Holly harness is orange, black, green, and this is orange, black, purple. So we're going to assume that orange and black are the same. All these three wire sensors are just like a ground and then a five volt power source in and a five volt out. They're all basically the same deal. The scaling may be a little different on this, but once we do a TPS auto set, we should be fine. Right, Wall? Yeah, for sure. We're just going to cut this right here. Mom will be scared. Oh. It's funny that all these wires are basically the same color, you know? That is funny. I wasn't expecting them to be the same colors. So because our coolant temp sensor is not down here on the intake where it's supposed to be, it's way out there. I'm lengthening the coolant temp sensor wires because I ain't scared of doing stuff like that. I stagger my cuts here just so they don't intersect with each other. That way it doesn't make a big bowl drop right in the middle either. Where are my hook going? Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> it's barely holding on. <laughs> like, the fuel hose is probably gonna help. Probably gonna leak, and I'm probably gonna Jamie Wills. But you wore my dog's up. Does that help? <laughs> I'm so proud of you being fancy with your wire loom and uh, wrapping it up. It's gonna look factory. You're a real deal on this one, huh? What we want to last, you know? Years of reliable service out of this van. Mm -hmm. We're gonna plug in our idle air control valve here, throttle position sensor, manifold air temperature sensor right there. This is for like a three bar map sensor or two bar, four bar, whatever, if you have boost. So we're using the internal map, we're not using that. This is for like your uh, fuel pressure sensor, which I don't think I'm gonna run that right now because I have a gauge right here. This right here is for our oil pressure sending unit down here. That plugs right into our coolant temp sensor and our radiator. Our injector harness just plugs right into the injector plug on the main harness and our ignition harness from our new distributor will plug right into this once we get that installed. I'm trying to figure out where we're going to mount the ECU. I guess we'll wait and see how much length we have on this. I'm trying to do that last. Like I said, it comes with a wideband O2 sensor. If you don't know the difference between a wideband and a narrow band O2 sensor, a wideband O2 sensor reads a very wide range. A factory narrow band will only read like right around stoichiometric, which is 14.7 to 1. A wideband, this thing can read all the way down down to like usually nine or 10 to one air fuel ratio all the way up to like probably 17 or 20 to one. It's a lot better tuning tool. If you remember, we put two oxygen sensor bungs in the exhaust system when we did this. So we're gonna pull one of the factory O2 sensors out we put in 
and screw this wideband into it. See, with the factory, they have one before the catalytic converter and one after, which this van never had a catalytic converter. So it's really kind of pointless. I bought this one brand new and a pigtail. So if I would have just went with a Holly in the first place, I would have saved myself some money on this stuff. But this guy here is gonna screw right into the place where that one was. Okay. We're gonna pull our factory distributor in here. It's gonna be really nice though, to have all the adjustability and make it run however I want to. I did a stock computer swap years ago in my Maverick. I did a 2.3 turbo swap, but that was a 1987 model computer. The world has changed, you know? Anything in the 2000s, you're doing a swap, it's just kind of a pain. Nowadays, they have body control modules where it just runs the entire car, which is what that Durango was. There we go, Ralphie. All right, grab that out of there. And chuck it out the window. Oh. I do like how on these Mopar distributors, they don't have a gear on them. If it's brass or steel or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. See, this is just a cam sensor. This has a cam and a crank sensor all built into one. Wow. Would you look at that? I mean, just look at it. Yeah. She needs to grease some bearings. She needs to grease some knees. They've been clicking for years. Poor granny. There, I'm trying to point the road to the same spot. You talk about close, guys. They must have made this thing for this. Look at this. I was really worried. Look at how close that is to that intake. It's literally like a feeler gauge distance from it. That was so tight. I was freaking out when I first started to drop it in. I thought, oh no, it's not going to fit. What's TVS? Temperature. Throttle position. Mm. Throttle position. Plugs right in. That's easy enough, huh? Yeah. We'll probably have to do some adjustments on this and get all the settings right, but I just want to drop it in so we can figure out which route our harness is going to go. But that's going to be all for tonight. We will hit this in the morning because we got a late start this evening. But we got all of our major engine sensors hooked up. I think we have everything hooked up to run the engine, don't we? No, we're using the built-in one, remember? Oh. So we just got to hook up our transmission and then our, our main powers and grounds. We'll hit that tomorrow. I wanted to include these photos. We had an old-timers day at church, and we all dressed up like cowboys, except for Squeeze, of course. She went with the 50s. Hope you like them. Next day, Rafi's got his fuel tank installed. Very nice. So what I'm gonna do now is hook up some of our individual power wires. So we got the main power and ground, which goes directly to the battery. We have a switch power source here, our fuel pump power wire, which can power a fuel pump up to 15 amps directly. We also have a small power and ground here. I believe that feeds our uh, like coal and fuel injectors and stuff like that. So we got a couple individual wires to hook up. I'm actually waiting on a couple things still. We're waiting on our transmission harness to come in and our coal and coal driver for this thing. Before I mount, this ECU, I'm going to glue down our carpet. Everything back here is screwed and bolted down, but we never glued down the carpet up front. This is actually like 20 something dollars at Lowe's. It's, what's it called? Like an outdoor mat or something? Maybe. It actually, I think looks pretty good for the price. We just never finished gluing it down in the last video because we had to leave on our trip. This is contact cement. You put it on both sides, let it kind of tack up. Once it's tacked up, you put it together and it stays exactly wherever you put it. This is not the motorhome. This is like locked up. Oh wow. What did that happen? I don't know. You're getting her. You just gotta make sure you're exactly where you want to be when you put this down. You can't take this back. Once you do it, it's done. See how it just stays right down? Yeah. You push it. You really have to wait till it's yeah. kind of dry. It has to be, if it's still wet, it will not stick. We've already got a hole here, but it's only like, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch. We're gonna drill a bigger hole in it so we can fit all of our wires through. Mounting the ECU away from the heat is the preferred method according to the instructions, which makes sense to me. This will tell us how long our wires need to be for all of our individual wires we had talked about. Enlarge this just a little bit. So now while it's gonna use our sweet patina so fresh and clean, see if we can clean up these oh. visors. We've never cleaned this motorhome up. It's crazy. Had it for two years. This is one of the few cars we never did a cleanup video on. If you use code sleeper dude at Sweet Patina, you get five percent off. I still did a good job on that. I'm putting a grommet in here to protect our wires. You don't want to cut a wire down, do you? Nope. Whoa! What the heck? Oh wow! 
Why haven't we cleaned this van up <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> before now? We've huh? been destroying it for two years now. Maybe we can squeeze this through here now. I tried to do the smallest hole we could and still fit everything. Okay. I believe one of these is the inputs and one's outputs. It's usually how they do this computer stuff. So this has indicator lights built into it, which is another good reason to have it in the cab with you, where if you had an issue, it'll tell you what's wrong. We may mount sideways like that. I hadn't thought about that. Man, it's all just coming to me, you know? So <laughs> this is our main power wires here. One thing I've still got to figure out is how to make this alternator work. It has two little small wires. We're going to have to look it up online or talk to somebody that knows something more than I do about alternators. We ought to be able to hook this up and make that alternator work. Pull that through over there. Accessory power wire that turns the ECU on. Yeah, pull it through over there. All right, that's good. Well, here's the red power wire. Can you see it? Yeah. Pull it up towards the battery. I think that's towards where the battery's at. If my calculations are correct, we won't hit the heater core. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that wasn't the first time you've done that. I know, right? That was a hard day for me, I'll tell you that. That needs to go straight to the battery. That's our main power on the ground. It's pretty long, so keep it coming. It's incredibly long, huh? Yeah. Three or four or two feet. We'll cut her off and save that for the next one, huh? Yeah. There's a heavy green and a heavy yellow wire going down there. Do you see it? It's following the fuel line. Yeah. Does the green one or the yellow one go to the fuel pump? Because one should go to the trans cooler fan and one goes to the fuel pump. Green goes to the fuel pump. Does yellow go to the trans cooler fan? Yeah. Look how convenient this is. They made this thing for us. So the green wire to our fuel pump and the green wire that they have for the fuel pump meet up right here exactly where the old one did. So I'm just going to cut this off because we don't need a 10 foot long wire. They give you plenty of wire to do this stuff. We just splice it in right there because our pump draws less than 15 amps, so we should be fine to directly power it. Like the Super Coupe, I use this green wire to trigger a relay to run the pump because it has a Holly 450 pump. It's a lot bigger pump. I think it draws like almost 20 amps at peak, so I think this is an inline 255 Holly. It doesn't pull as many amps. Tell me if it's hot, Wash. Lands on it. Artiste at work over here. You have Daddy's electrical tape? I think he was looking for that. This ground wire also is in the perfect spot. It says do not connect this to the same source as our main power and ground over here. Somewhere with good continuity between the engine and the chassis. Well, this cylinder head has a ground strap to the frame. So we're going to go right to the back of this cylinder head. Once again, we got way too much wire. We'll save it for the next one. Very good. Oh, that's cool. I haven't seen you do that one. Yeah, it's a new design. You have like a bunch of paint on your face. It'd be fine. So our battery sits right here. We are going to have tons of extra wire to this main power right here. I'll probably leave that the same length, but we'll cut it right there. Look at that. Look how much extra they give you. This is like 10 gauge wire. This stuff ain't cheap. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, I was making us a new charging wire for our alternator because the factory one, we use the Durango one. It only had to go to the fuse box, not all the way to the battery. Now it's gonna go to the battery, it needs to be about a foot longer. So she's gonna take this old battery cable we found and make a charging cable out of it. Easy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot. There good. goes the finger. Yeah, there goes your leg. And there goes your leg. Ralphie, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out how to do this. What are you trying to figure out how to do? CB radio. CB radio, son. Number one important thing right there. You have to make a run for it. <laughs> make a run for it. <laughs> this white wire comes off the ground cable. It actually goes to our aftermarket fuse box in there. Cause if you remember our factory fuse box was completely melted. Yeah. And we replaced it with the aftermarket one. We actually have one that has power all the time. One that has power only when the key's on. This one here is our chassis ground. that goes from our battery to the body. These are our two power wires for our Terminator X. And then the black and red one here are the factory power wires that power the fuse block. That's what everything does out here. Let's hook up our ignition wire. And I think we'll have all the loose wires for this. 
wired in, right? Mm -hmm. Don't look at me like that. Mm -hmm. okay. This is our constant power here, which this is sending power out to like our lights and junk like that. This is that ground lug I was telling you about that, that white wire comes to. And then this is our switch power, which is where we're going to hook up our red with a white stripe wire. We can power anything that needs to be on when the key's on from that. We're gonna screw it in right there. Because we removed our relay panel here out of the Durango, we no longer have a starter relay. There's no factory starter relay from the Dodge van. There's no Durango one. And since we're gonna have several things that we need to run off a of relay, we're gonna use this MSD four channel relay module here. You saw us put a two channel one of these in the Pinto when we wired our lights and stuff in, but these things are really simple to do. They're less expensive than the solid state relays. They'll do 40 amps a piece. They come with a built-in fuse. So basically, you have a single power in here, which powers both these relays. This is your power out, so you can have one power in and two power outs there. They're set up to be switched off a of ground source. So you hook up a ground switch wire here from whatever your toggle switch or whatever, power in, power out, and you're done. If you actually want to switch it off of a power source, you just take this jumper plate out of here like we did with the Pinto, and you can switch it off of a power source. Super simple to wire in. It has an indicator light showing when it's powered on. Got a nice cover as well. I think we're gonna mount this thing back where our Durango computer was because we just don't have much real estate here to work with, do we? It'll give us options in the future to power other stuff. So see that jumper right there, all that's doing is going from your main power in and sending power over to these relays on the trigger side, which has basically no amp load. So since we have a positive signal coming from our ignition switch i'm just going to take that jumper out of there we've just got to send a ground signal to this right here so it has a ground for the relay and then we can trigger it right here off the positive side you've been working on your car yeah. we finally got squeeze working on the car you believe it guys <laughs> pull it up your way oh easy 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 <laughs> Keep it running. I fixed the leak. I got my starter relay wired in. So this is a heavy power wire going straight to the battery. I used the extra wire from the Terminator X main power wire. This is the main power out to the starter. This goes to a constant ground source. And then this orange one goes to our ignition switch. When this sends a signal, it's already got a ground. It kicks this on, which connects the power from the main power source out to here. So these are the only two with high amperage loads. These are very minimal and we're fused. So we should be good to go there. Now we got options for our other stuff. I forgot to mount the front of the engine. And the back brakes are locked up. That would help. I'm gonna do something I've been excited about. This is our five inch digital dash. So this is bigger than the standard like three and a half inch one that's in the Super Coupe. And this one comes with a GPS speedometer. Oh. So we're gonna know exactly how fast you go in that's this right. thing. Okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to data log it. Oh. This guy here is magnetic, so sticks wherever you want to stick. This will actually plug into our main harness and you can do tuning from this. Like I said, it has a speedometer. This will have every gauge we need. So it'll have our oil pressure. It'll have water temp voltage, anything you want to see, vacuum boost, uh, literally any sensor on the engine you can read from here. And we've got to get the plastic off this immediately. Oh, heavy If not heavy sooner. Heavy. Oh yeah, look how much better that is already. Pull that back that way. That'll plug into our harness. All you gotta do here is plug it into your main harness. Like that right there and you're good to go. Now our digital dash is connected to our Terminator X. That's also the port where you hook your laptop if you wanna do more advanced tuning. That is so ghetto looking. It's not. Front and center, huh? Yeah. Curve feeling. That way we won't hit our top on nothing. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this guy goes on the outside or not. I just stuck it there for now. Got our digital dash up here. I mean, really now, as far as making it run, we need our transmission harness and our coil driver. Ralphie, that looks so hey, good. It's like got bullhorns. 
Yeah, it's like bullhorns, isn't I didn't it? I like the one, but I kind of like the two. See, if you send something in the fan mail and it's like six months to a year later and you're like, man, they never use that. Just wait. We're getting there. We'll get to it. I think this is your best work yet, Ralphie. You know, before we do anything else, guys, we've got to get this CB in here immediately, Ralphie says. <laughs> so we're wrapping this is our ridiculous. RV now, oh. even though we don't have a running RV. <laughs> we gonna have CB, son. Yeah. We're gonna have to look up that CB word manual the guy sent us, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we know what to say. I'm hoping it works good. We'll see. I know mom's so nosy. She'll be wondering what's oh, going on. Oh, I'll be trying to listen to everybody's yeah. conversation around. What'd you say? <laughs> Repeat that. They won't be able to understand the word you're saying, though, is a problem. That's okay. <laughs> this is the first CB I've ever installed, sadly. You're just not cool like that. So I'm gonna hook up the manifold air pressure sensor. That thingy, Bobby. I'm gonna go right here. You want the wire cutters? I'm about to get it. Okay. See. Uh, I got your CB wired in, boy. And I got that hooked up. Woo! Let's try it. The Terminator X comes with different barbs, depending on which vacuum line size you need. And that gives it a signal to know, basically, how much manifold vacuum you have or boost. Ralphie really needs to see his CB working. And I'd like to see the Holly Dash turn on, I guess. So we're going to hook the battery up for the first time. I'm nervous. Woo! You're always nervous. Listen to him trying to get me. Anything happening in there? Uh, I don't see anything. I don't see any smoke anywhere. Hey, lights came on. Uh, yeah, look at this. Ooh, ooh. That's cool. So it's telling me to do a firmware update. Hey, there's hey. your little stylish. Look at that. That's order. cool, huh? All right, that what about this cool. guy? How do we turn it on, Ralphie? Did you read that far in the no, instructions? No, he did not. No, I did not. Just click buttons, that's what I do. Should be on and off. Uh, right? Wait, on the top. Ooh. Oh, power, that helps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if we have a good signal. We are inside a building. It says busy. Look, you get. Oh, I think I just transmitted. <laughs> That's so cool. I don't even know how to work one. That's volume. Come on, pick something up. Oh. <laughs> you ever seen that movie Signs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're not going to pick anything up because we're in a building. But at least it works. Why is it buzzing all the time? I feel like it shouldn't buzz all the time like that. But this hanger came with the RV. Amazing. We'll have Definitely. to figure that out. Woo! At least we know the Holly works. The CB works. It'll at least power up. I was looking at the paperwork with the distributor, and we do have to put it in there at a certain degree, which we did not do. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to have to go back and do that before we actually try to start it. But looks like our wiring so far is right, huh? Awesome. Yeah. Woo. I'm updating our firmware here so that the monitor and the ECU match each other. Okay, we're going straight to the GCF wizard here to set this up. So this is multi-point fuel injection. It's an eight cylinder and it's got 18436572 as the firing order. Exactly. Cubic inches or the metric system. Let's go with cubic inches because we're America. That's why I'm telling you, you can make it run anything. It says all the way from 10 cubic inches to 2000. So this is a 360. It's still a stock cubic board. Inches. Like I said, you could run your like mini bike off of it, you know? Yeah. Target idle. We want more than 400, probably like 800. Yeah, we'll go with 800. Oh, okay. <laughs> Quit making fun of me. Cam specs, we're definitely below 235. Ignition type, Holly dual sink. Fuel pressure, what is our fuel pressure? Usually 40 something? Yeah, let's just Or is do. it 60? Is it 43 or 60? I think it's 40. All right, we'll go with 43. No, it's got Excel injectors in it. Super simple setup. It's got 30 pounders, no nitrous, supercharger, turbo, internal Shucks. one bar, map sensor, drive-by wire, no. Trans control, yes. Look, you can pick your transmission. I guess it's a 96 to 2046 RE. I guess. I don't even know, because he rebuilt it. I don't know what year the transmission is. It's wanting to know about our cases. This thing's going to ask my social security number next. It's about like charity one. What? Charity one. Charity one. It's got all the way up to 70 inches, Ralphie. It's got a 14 gear. This tells the transmission everything it needs to know. So it is going to transfer that tune up to the Holly now. 
Oh, I hear it clicking. Wizard completed. Sock ignition power to set up. Lots are off. Okay. Oh look, we got readings now. Look, it's showing our battery voltage. We need to set our TPS. Let's see if that's working or not. Slowly press the panel to the floor, then slowly release it. It told me there was not a big enough variance for it to work. So I looked up the pin out and I believe I have the orange wire and the purple wire mixed up. It's not orange to orange, it's orange to green, I guess. We're gonna switch it. You know, I would have thought it was orange to orange. Who knew? Hopefully this is the only wires we got mixed up. Let's try this again. Guys, I can't believe you didn't tell me I had that wrong. How would we know? How would we have known that? I thought y'all were professional mechanics. Wizard. TPS auto set, start. Push pedal down, slowly, let off, do it twice. Successful, okay, I just had the wire switched. Look, we're at oh, zero, look we're at 94%. That's about all mom needs is 94% of the throttle. This thing has a butter smooth throttle. I mean, butter. Coolant temp, so we can change these to whatever we want, I think. We can edit that and make it whatever we want. Idle air control position. We're going to change it to... Uh, air fuel ratio? Yeah, let's go to air fuel ratio. So now it says our air fuel ratio. We need an oil pressure one, though. That is more important, really. Let's change this to oil pressure. Oh, we can set up warning ranges? What's well, shoot. warning range? Look, we can set up, like, alarm. Look, so we're going to say normal is 20 to 60. We'll say give us an alarm if it gets to 5 pounds of oil pressure. <laughs> or over 100. Look at that. We're smart. We got negative 0.3 right now on oil pressure. So I set it up where we see our oil pressure, battery, and coolant temp, and our ignition timing, what our speed is in miles per hour. I may need to make that bigger when mom drives. Mm -mm. Hey, we can set up with an alarm for the speed when mom drives. No, thank you. Like, yeah, it's like a little oh, Yeah, like anything so above like 72, it's just like an alarm goes beep, off. Beep, beep. I think we've messed with it long enough. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to actually turn the starter over without the ignition on and make sure my starter relay I wired in works. I must have guessed right on that one. I guess I need to go ahead and set up our distributor in the right spot. You have to have the engine at 50 degrees, and that's where you're supposed to set it at, pointing at, you know, a certain thing. We'll figure it out. We need to go ahead and do that now. I can't believe how dirty that was. That's ridiculous. You know? You're doing a great job with that. that. Very disgusting. Let's get this thing to 50 degrees before top dead center on number one. I'm gonna try and caulk up some of this mess here and paint it, trying to help it look a little bit better. Yeah, it doesn't really look this that good. It's a hot mess right here. Go on the extra mile. Yeah. Tell me if you feel anything on your thumb. Pressure coming out. All right, Phil, there you go. Right there? Yep. Okay. So that's 20 degrees. This is 30 degrees. And I measured the distance between them. 40 degrees is right at the C. And 50 degrees is right there. So this is where we need this thing to be lined up at. On our marker up here at zero. And we can drop the distributor in. Point at number one. You can see my scratch there at 50 degrees. We're going to get right here where it lines up dead on with TDC. Let's go mess with our distributor now. So this router is supposed to be pointing at that gold screw right there with the black tab. That's the crank sensor. There's actually an LED light for the cam and the crank. It looks like we're going to have to move our intermediate shaft over a tooth or so to get it pointing the way it wants. Drop it down in here. Now we got to plug it in, turn the power on to it. Mabel, that is not helping. Somebody run the goat out of our brand new RV, please. Yeah. Get out of here. Go, go, go. You're going to get a panking. All right, that's how it's supposed to be. Both lights are supposed to be lit up. We turn it clockwise on this engine until the crank one goes out. We turn it back until the crank just comes on. And that's supposed to be perfectly timed. And we're going to point this at the number one cylinder. And we should be good to go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that is. I've never exactly. timed one like that. That's a lot easier, though, That's honestly. really neat. Like, it's very obvious where you need to be with that. Now, if you had an old harmonic balancer, you need to verify that your harmonic balancer hasn't slipped. We have a brand new one on there. We verified all that when we put this engine together a few months ago, so we should be good to go. You know this old purple? She has been into it, hasn't she? Yeah, into it with the berries. So our plugs look pretty fuel fouled here, especially for a fuel injected engine. It's kind of crazy. We got one here that was definitely burning different than the rest. That's probably our miss right there. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. We know the deal by now, don't we? Yep. Come on. Hey, feed with it. I'm feeding Gonzalez. Oh, we 
got a lot done today. At least we got the CB working, right? Yeah, that's all that matters. Hopefully our transmission harness will come in tomorrow and our cool driver. Plug those in and wire them in. I think we'll have it ready to fire. I guess we will see you guys tomorrow and we'll get right back on this thing. Next morning, we're back out here. The two parts we're waiting on for our Terminator X are supposed to be here today. But until then, we do have a lengthy list of things we need to do to get this roadworthy. I think I'm gonna go ahead and tackle our tail lights and backup camera, because those are pretty important. We already pre-ran the wires for the tail lights behind all the insulation, if you remember. Oh, so yeah, I just gotta drop that wire down. I actually bought like a trailer brake wiring kit because it has like all the wires you need for tail lights. Hopefully it's long enough to go to wherever the source is. I gotta find where the factory wires are and splice into that because all that stuff is cut. Get it, Scooty, get it, get it. Oh, well, get he's it, on the prowl this get morning. It. What you finding? So these are the wires that I was telling you about we ran behind the wall. So they go back behind here over to this tail lot and that tail lot. I've got a hole in the floor that was already here. I'm gonna run these down through and we'll run them up under the van because that's easier than going through Cabinet all these cabinets. Ralph, if you want to go out there, I'll push this down to you. It's going to be on his head in a minute. Scooter. There's nothing in there. <laughs> All he does is hunt. It's right behind the gas filler. I got it. Hold on, hold on. I'm paying it. Hold on. The story of my life. Keep going. Keep it coming. Is that going to be long enough to reach the front of the van? Oh, yeah. So here's the mess I found under here. This tees off and goes to the trailer brakes, which this thing doesn't even have a trailer hitch. You can see they've used those old clips. I hate to tie that in. So this is our main harness coming in from our van. This should be all our wires we need for our tail lights, brake lights, backup lamps, stuff like that. Hit the brake pedal. All right, pull it back up. All right, turn the headlights on. Try like a left blinker, right blinker. Okay, what, which way is that one, Mom? Down. So that's left blinker. We're getting brake lights and blinkers, but no tail lights. So here's the mess I found under here. All these tail light wires are like crimped together here with some cheapy connectors. Looks like the wires from a fuel tank have been cut which explains why the fuel gauge doesn't work i guess i'm not even sure what this blue wire does and then it goes right up here and there's a white and a pink wire coming out from the cab that's been cut so i don't know somebody has added this in i think this is actually another trailer brake wiring kit like what i'm doing that's been chopped on and messed with a bunch so we're probably going to take it all the way up to here and cut this off which this is like right at the back of the transmission and run it all new from there back He's alerting. It's inside that casing. He knows it. He's getting it. I'm not sure about his hunting abilities, honey. <laughs> get, 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 get. Don't worry, our postman's on it here. <laughs> oh, gosh! Just bring the box in. Leave the bike there. What's wrong with him, Granny? I can see it now. One of these cars is going to get a big dent in it. That's your brake light. That's the top yellow light. Your blinker. Yeah, that's the bottom clear light, like a backup light. Yeah, that one's brighter. Untested ramp. This is gonna be epic. Why'd you make it more grand? Fun. You should put more wood. That's the floppiest ramp I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's like a disaster. Oh, yeah. oh, Grady likes her moon pies. Look, she just wants a moon pie. Can't fault a girl for that. So I've got my brake lights figured out and we've kind of got our blinkers figured out. I think I need a new flasher in there. For some reason, none of the wires going back here have tail light signal. So I've got to find that out. Just make sure when the window's open and I'll be oh, getting yeah. on the hand or something. I think it's like this and then that or something. Y'all yeah. remember last time we had bikes on a bike ramp, what happened? Yeah, while I end up with a crooked arm. 
Yeah, I got the whole dash apart tracing down wires. Looks like this is the wire that needs to go to my tail lights. So I got to splice into this, looks like, to go to the back. And this is what the kids are doing right here. Making laps in the field. So we reconnected this blue wire to the fuel sin unit, which this is the ground side of the deal. I realized I did not have a power side of this gauge. After messing with this deal, I figured out we didn't have power coming into this. So since that's the only gauge in the factory stuff that we're using, I just hooked a new power wire to it, straight to it, instead of running through all these other things. So with power ran straight to it, we now have a fuel gauge that works. We've literally been down here like half a day or more messing with this. It's just me digging and checking and finding stuff, but we now have a working fuel gauge and brake lights and tail lights and blinkers so that's good so this is all the splices and connections they had made over the years so look at that looks like a hot mess yeah look how rotten it is now we need to do a backup camera <laughs> at least since we built this whole rv ourselves, we know exactly what's behind there you know you think that's a pretty good angle there yeah yeah it's hard to drive one of these without a backup camera. Yes, it is. I guess it's doable, and I'm sure people did it for years, but like, you basically have no vision back here at all. I'm kind of glad it already has some screw holes here because- You would feel real bad, Yeah, it's you? got a really nice dash aside from those screw holes and those screw holes. This is gonna be our display for our backup camera. This thing's gonna look like a darn space shuttle. Out there? Yeah, I think that's good. So this thing has really basic wiring instructions. It's just a power and a ground back to the backup camera, power and a ground to the monitor, and I believe you're good to go. Nice thing about having an RV is I have 110 power in here. Turn it on. Oh, did I put the camera upside down? <laughs> is that what I did? Maybe. Is there a way to rotate it, you think? What's this do? Let's look at the instructions before you start toppy toppy in a way. All right, it says press mode. Oh, no problem at all. I think we're set up pretty good there on our angle. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. That's going to be super helpful. I set it up where anytime the thing's running, it's on because I think we're going to need it in traffic to see when to change lanes and stuff or if we're towing with it eventually. Ralphie, why don't you go back there and we'll make sure it's working good. Well, we have an assailant. Oh, gosh. Oh, Ralphie, we're going to have to blur this out. <laughs> I think it's working. Just all braces. So we're doing a little figure in here while Ralphie's airing up our casings. And this is our generator mount we got from Rec Pro. You know, obviously I can't block the tail light here. So I think we're gonna put it right there. Kind of like to leave the middle open. That gives us the closest shot from here to our power inlet. So we should be able to plug this cord right into there, have power anywhere we go. I've got these big long ones here that came with it. Just space it just a little bit off the back of our camper so it's not just sitting there rubbing the whole time, you know? I got my paint. I'm gonna try to help this match a little bit better. So I ended up putting the two big long bolts all the way through the bumper and then one through the frame rail back here. I think that'll be plenty enough to hold our generator on here. It actually came with some braces. We may eventually put them on that come out this way, but I don't really think we need them for our generator. Oh, look at that. We got extra room even. We'll put a strap to those and all kinds of mounting loops and we'll have power anywhere we want to go. Yeah. Off the grid, son. Zombie apocalypse happens. I ain't worried. What are you doing? <laughs> That's you, I got the flex seal, baby. <laughs> oh, she's flex sealing it. So it has a bunch of screw holes back here where, yeah. so mom's plan is to flex seal the bottom of it. That's never leaking again. Hey, flex seal does a trick. Have are you, you not seen those experience? boats? Oh yeah, the boats, the holes? Yeah. Slapping on there, it'll work just fine. So we got the backup camera done. Woo! We got the generator mounted. I think we're pretty much done. Yeah, we got tail lights-ish. You fancy, you got the brush out? Fix my runs for you seal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you don't put it all on in one coat, honey. I did, I just did a little bit. Hey, don't you worry, I got this. Generator looks good on there, got her all strapped down. Oh Lord. Mom's getting it all straightened out here. <laughs> What? I was talking about my generator. I've been using my arm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why would you do that? You have a paper ah, machine right I here. I know. I just, you know. 
<laughs> well, Ralphie has talked me into not doing the wheel bearings this time. <laughs> He says they'll be fine. We put new outers in, but we didn't put new inners. It's always scared me. We'll fix that on the road or before the big trip. All right. Uh, I don't like working on these big trucks. Look at that. That yellow looks good. That nice clean center cap looks really yeah. nice on there too. Do it, son. Woo. So the reason we went to call with them was to help our highway gears, which actually I was better off than I thought. It's got a 14 gear, 31 inch tall casing. With our overdrive 46 RE transmission, we should be right at 2000 RPM at 70 miles an hour. So should be perfect. A lot better than it was back in the day with that 727 in it. Looking good, Mom. Looking good. I just got to look at this. It looks so much better. It's, it's not perfect. So somebody had cut out these three places in the side repairing like plumbing and stuff. And it looked hideous. And we had patched it with new metal when we put the sides on it. But we had never went back and painted it. It looks really good. You did good. Like from a glance, you would never know. Yeah. You know, like 60 miles an hour <laughs> with a bad eye, you'd never know. It looks a lot better. Thank Good news, our transmission harness is here. Basically, this plugs into our Terminator X Max. The other end plugs into our transmission. And we got a couple loose wires. It has a built-in fuse and relay to power the transmission. But we just got a power and a ground to hook up, a wire that goes to your brake light switch, so that way it knows when you hit the brakes to unlock the torque converter. It also has optional wires where if you want to have an overdrive off switch, you can do that. And it also gives you a status wire where you could have it on a light bulb where if your overdrive was off, it would have a light for overdrive off. We're probably not going to do that. Get out of the trash, Granny. Come on. What's she doing? Mom's gonna try to fix our door over here because they painted from here down just solid orange. And it's supposed to be, you know, white, orange, white, yellow. She's gonna try to fix that now. Have you sanded any of this, by the way? Oh my gosh. I'm only sitting up at night awake Woo! over that. Don't you worry about it, baby. Transmission harness plugs in right there. If we ever wanted to do drive-by wire, we have the option right there. So we're just gonna tie in here to our accessory fuse block where this gets power when the key's on. Woo! It's so easy, I think, compared to like the other stuff. It's a whole lot easier than the factory harness I'm yeah. with. I wasted so much time going through that. At least this is kind of pre-wired for you. I'm trying to find which side of the brake light switch has power only when we hit the brakes. All right. The red wire has power all the time. The white one only has power when you hit the brakes. So I'm going to hook it to it. I got my ground and my positive hooked up over here. We got our brake light switch hooked up. I'm gonna get underneath here and plug in the transmission now. So all we gotta do is take the transmission harness here, plug it straight into our transmission. Then it's got a speed sensor back here we plug into. That's all there is to it on this end. That looks a lot better, honey. She just left what they had done here and just painted the white around it. We don't know if the yellow stopped. It may have never had yellow. The other side has a W here, but we don't have room for a W. So I'm not sure, but it looks really good. Thank you. It just showed up? Yes. Man, look at that. Let's get this thing together. See if we can fire it off tonight. That was late delivery right there. Late. Basically, a Terminator X is designed to fire smart cools like an LS cool is a smart cool. It's a cool that has like a four-wire hookup that has its own power and grounds. The Terminator X has a driver big enough to just trigger that. Similar to the way a relay works where you have a very low amperage trigger and it has its own power and ground source. Well, since we don't have a setup like that, we're just gonna run a traditional 12 volt MSD cool. We need this driver right here. It basically takes the signal from the Terminator X and allows it to run a dumb cool, like a two wire cool like this. It has its own power and ground source to this little driver. You hook up the white wire from the driver to the white points output from the Terminator X. And then this goes to your negative side of your cool and the positive side goes to 12 volt. So 12 12 volt here, gray wire here, white to white on the Terminator X, and then switch power and ground on this, and we should be finished up. As always, all the part numbers of this stuff will be in the video description, as well as a link to Holly's website. It's amazing that little guy can do anything. And that is little. Technology these days, huh? Right, we're gonna mount our coil right there. That'll be real easy for me to check going down the road. But I hooked my power source over here, hooked our ground up to our main ground source. Guys, I think that's the last wire. Thank the Pretty Lord. Sure. Hook up that battery, son. You know, right, let's hook it up. Okay, say a little prayer. Here we go. All <laughs> <laughs> pressure is 75. 
battery's not charged and I forgot about the alternator. We never hooked that up. Look, it actually revs and like goes. Look, we got a reverse. Man, it's taking gear good now, isn't it? She's popping up there. 71 pounds of oil pressure. Sitting here at Island, yeah. I think we're a little low on transmission fluid. Man, how cool is that? Sitting there running smooth. Woo. Awesome. But it's like 90 pounds of oil pressure. It never was that responsive. Air fuel ratio is 12 and a half to one sitting here. Coolant temp 75. There's mom. So we gotta get it charging. I for completely forgot about that. We only got 11.6 volts. That is so cool with it. The longer this thing runs, the more we drive it, the better it should run. It has self-learning capabilities. Our fuel pressure is right where it needs to be at 40. That's crazy how good it's sitting here and running already. After two years of working on it, I finally feel like we accomplished something. <laughs> Look at what all we accomplished before this back here. I know, but like, it didn't even run until now. It's like, oh. We still don't have exhaust hooked up to the back. Oh, we set them off again. Mom's cooking. <laughs> We're gonna back it out so we don't kill ourselves in here. <laughs> See how the transmission does. I don't actually have this type of fluid here, so I can't add any more. It's showing to be a little bit low. It is pulling, so it can't be too low. Hey, zip tie that thing in there. Man, it's just good to hear it running and like staying running. Down to about 100 degrees. Yeah, it's getting warmer in here now, yeah. That's awesome. That's, That's a good so cool. feeling, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't have been all asleep tonight if that thing hadn't fired up. I know. I wouldn't have been able to. What we got to do is figure out how to get that alternator to work. So there's two wires on the back of the alternator. I got to buy some more transmission fluid because we're out. We need to take it down the road and actually like let it do some learning and see how it shifts. And we can tune all that. Like we can tune our shift points. Wow. When the torque converter locks up, when it doesn't, that ought to be pretty fun. That's to really do that. exciting. Very exciting. That's very exciting. Yes, it is. I can't believe it actually runs for that good. <laughs> I know, right? I'll do some research on this alternator. Are you excited, Squeeze? Yeah. <laughs> that was there was real enthusiasm behind that one we'll get back on this tomorrow and uh hopefully take her for a first drive farther than mike's house if we could just make it past mike's house we'll be doing good Woo! all right it's the next day we went to the parts store i got a banging haircut i went ahead and got some new spark plugs because our other ones look really fuel foul when we took them out and i also did some googling and talked to mr mccool about the whole uh, voltage regulator deal so supposedly the old dodge voltage regulator will work for regulating the voltage on that new alternator so looks pretty simple just a two-wire deal then we can take this thing for a drive huh Woo! Uh, mom's in an undercoat under the bottom of this thing right yes she's already started on it she got some undercoating from Rec Pro. She's spraying the backside of all this wood because we don't want it to get water on it and rot. So we gotta put some sort of coating on it. You doing the plugs? Yeah. Let's get to it. It'd be awesome to have overdrive in this thing. Yeah, because I'm gonna be burning them highways up. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Looking good, honey. <laughs> you know you're gonna get down to your face, right? Yeah, I'm gonna move for it gets over here. Okay. Last one, Ralphie? Yeah, she's on her second. So that means you're winning, right? For sure. Look, look how easy she's taking it. Just these, like head on the steering wheel. These, these two things on top are like not working. Yeah, the tubes that the spark plugs are in kind of are a pain. Okay, high five. Hey, high five on winning and stuff. We just want to give this thing the best chance of running good. And with those plugs, I don't know if that's going to happen. It does look like our plugs are even now, though. Evenly bad. Now, I know these things have to have a good grounding surface because that's a lot of problems with these Mopars is like the ignition box not grounding good. So I'm going to clean the paint off back here before we mount this thing. 
This thing was actually really cheap, and O'Reilly's had the plug in stock. We didn't have to order any of this. So the way this wires up is the green wire, which is the one on the side, goes to the tan wire. It's the wire on the right, holding it from the top the way it plugs in. And then on the other side, this green wire from our plug, which is the wire on the left, goes to this blue wire and then goes to a 12 volt key power source. Are you still working on spark plugs? Yes, I, I still am. I don't know What's how. What's the hold up? Well, see these stupid tube things are messing me up. Mm. And the steering wheel's not helping, and there's just a lot of complications. <laughs> well, I'm gonna install this grill. I don't want to break it even. Exactly. She's owing for Jilly. They ain't making them no more, are they? Hey, that's a Winnebago specific grill. Unfortunately, ours is pretty cracked out. All up through here has been bondoed and put together. I know we didn't show us putting this in, but this is actually off like a NASCAR car. I got this Mooresville, North Carolina a few years back. We made a video about it. I got a clamp to go from three and a half down to three inch, but we got the McCool mod done on the alternator here. Hopefully all things work. She's not the smartest. Guy. She's not the smartest one for sure. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong size mm -hmm. coupler completely. I thought it was three to three and a half. It ended up being two and a half to three, which is the wrong size. But I had this old power choke Ford one upstairs, so I put that on it. So this is gonna go down. I zip tied it up where it can't get on the exhaust manifold. We're gonna go down to the bottom of the front bumper to get air. Ram air, you know. A little loose in there, so that's not gonna work because this is pretty hard plastic. This is the clamp that came with it. It's clamped all the way down. So, Low C -go -C. I was hoping to stick that filter up behind the bumper where it's hidden, but uh, I think we're gonna have to get a different filter because this one's not working. Do you not have one? Who needs air filters anyway? Yeah, it just <laughs> it just slows down your airflow, which slows down your, I don't know, horsepower. And, and look how nice that looks. Yeah. Hey, you need an emergency cutoff? Boom, choked her. Looks a lot better with the grill in it. Yeah. yeah instead of it's a been radiator. It's so long. I feel like we've right. actually accomplished something. Like we that. have accomplished yeah. a lot. This is my best accomplishment right there. I know. It looks really good. <laughs> 14 volts. It's charging. Woo. Awesome. You know how much quieter it is now? Well, I guess let's get her out on the road and let her learn a little bit, huh? Why not? Right. Woo. That backup camera is awesome. <laughs> I gotta get used to driving it, huh? Yeah. It's so weird. It's very, like, it's like a cloud or a boat. It's like you're on a boat or something. Ben Frank's already hit the... <laughs> hit the Why? Why had to be Ben Frank? once it gets up to temperature it'll be learning and correcting the fuel table it's pretty quiet except for that air sucking noise right there i should have plugged that little hole off huh yeah see how she pulls this hill with ease this is great isn't it it's so fun i can't believe we're actually in this thing it says we have half a tank of gas hopefully that's telling me the truth 14.7 volts. Coolant temp is uh, 116. 70 pounds of oil pressure. <laughs> it's so weird to be actually driving in it, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to go down the big hill. Yes. Oh, sure. We got a big hill down here. I ain't going down. Come back up. Worries me. Come on. It's idling down now. More like where it's supposed to be at. We don't have a vacuum, we do. 
truck we didn't make it yeah. we had to back back down this hill so hopefully we have better luck this time i really pray we make it up this hill it's, it's a big hill. hill it is a big hill we made it down it that's the start maybe we should just go the long way and go go right. around the hill it's giving you south dakota vibes <laughs> <laughs> it's rattling just a little bit when i punch it Staying about 156 degrees, 60 pounds of oil pressure. I don't hear any scary noises yet. Nah, she good. You're doing stuff. You hear like, uh, uh, uh. Trying to figure things out. I'm gonna have to fix that for sure. We'll pull over here at the church parking lot and check it out. Watch y'all get out and see if it's leaking while I'm doing the tuning stuff. What about it, Ralphie? Oh, fine. See, I have 36 degrees. This was at 26 degrees and I changed it. <laughs> you can't leave nothing alone. I know, I bumped the time. Let's turn it down. We'll turn it down to like 28 or something. That's wide open throttle, so it's going to be under a hard load, you know? We'll turn it to 27 at wide open. I noticed once we got above like 34 degrees, it was dinging. So we'll do that like 32. Take a few degrees of timing out of it. So we'll try that and see what it does. We're gonna see what this leak is. Ralphie said it's dripping on the exhaust on this side. Looks like it's dripping. That looks like a rear main field. Hopefully not. That would be unfortunate. That would be unfortunate. That looks like where it's dripping in the back of the engine though. All right, back on the road. Now watch your refrigerator. Yeah, I'm watching it. Let's see if that helps with our pinging it. Run the generator and run the AC. Yeah. It's staying rock solid at 160 degrees. 
14.7 volts. Oil pressure staying in the 60s. It's got more power than the old 360. The one time we drove that thing to the car show, <laughs> it had like no power. Lousy day. I know one thing. What? My seat's gonna be up front. You don't like sitting back it's there? It's making me car sick. I just can't wait to pick Wawa from school in this thing. <laughs> 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 as soon as we get the air oh, horn Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, once we get the air horn installed, we're showing up to Wawa school. Oh yeah, it's happening. Hey, our speed on is working. Yay! It, it got it got its signal. signal. We were out in the sticks, so. Awesome. This is so much fun to finally get to drive it after like two years. Is my home today? Is I home? don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't heard the horn blow. Well, Roll up in there. He might be home. You never know. Oh, but I mean, with his international travels and fans and such, I don't know if he's. Oh, Roll through. I don't see his car. Well, he must not be home today. That man, he's never home when I try to find him. Hey, the power steering is awesome. I think we do have a little bit of a leak there too. But it is smooth as can be. I think I'll let you drive home. No. Yep. No. Yep. Babe. I don't hit every tree. <laughs> this poor motor, huh? <laughs> you sure you got it? Oh, yeah, you got this. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you better buckle up for sure, kids. We're doing good, though. Still sitting on 160. Idle's right at 800. Here we go. Oh, gosh. Ralphie, watch the fridge. I got to swing her out. Probably a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Y'all right back there? What? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> you're setting sail. It's a little floaty, isn't it? The horn don't work. Don't be trying to blow the horn. We had to save weight everywhere we could. <laughs> Look at you go. I don't know if you want me to drive. Woo! <laughs> a little close there, honey. What did you just do? Why are you flooring it? You gotta check her out. We made it back. Can you believe it? Okay. Just put her in part. We'll leave it running. Hey, don't rev the guts out of it. I feel like we got a vacuum. Did you hear all that sucking noise? You see, it looks like it's got a little bit of a mist to it. Yeah, I see it a little bit. I hit it, but I can't find it. You got a blown intake gasket or something? Oh. There it is. That would help, huh? Yeah. Ralphie, we need a vacuum cap. Yeah, that throws things off a little bit, doesn't it? You'd think we would have caught that before now. <laughs> We're too excited. We gotta slow down. That probably screwed up the learning a little bit. Oh, on that no. drive. I knew it sounded too loud. Ralphie got me a vacuum cap. Much quieter in here now. He's a ripper, huh? You see about that leak. So we got a little bit of oil dripping right there. Looks like it could be rear main related. We got a tiny power steering leak too right here. I don't know what that noise is. Sounds like it's coming from the transmission area. Son, calm down. We got a squeeze back there. Ralphie's turned the CB on. No, don't. They'll find you. You never saw that movie, did you? No. I want to say Breaker Breaker One Nine so bad. We're getting so much static. There's got to be a button to push to get rid of the static. Is it this? Breaker Breaker. <laughs> 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 Hey, it's working pretty good now. Is this your first experience with a CB radio? Yeah. I 
I think we're picking up another country. <laughs> I think we got to get other things done other than playing with the CV. While I'm working on this RV trying to get her sorted out, Ralphie's been dying to work on this mini bike. He stripped it down to the frame. I built this thing for mom about six years ago. Ralphie's converted it to his mini bike. Took the money he had saved up and bought a Predator 212. Took the home lot 179 off of there. He's gonna try to outrun my mini bike with this one, I reckon. He's always messing with something around here. Me and Ralphie are gonna take her out for a drive. Now that we figured out that our vacuum leak is fixed. See how she does, let it learn some more. See if we can get it running better and better. I strapped the fridge in, I'll call you if I need you. All right, sounds good. Ralphie, you ready for this adventure? Oh my lord, yes. <laughs> I strapped the refrigerator in. We gotta mount that a little better. Hog leg. I like where it shifts so far. Let's get some real speed up. We really haven't gotten out into overdrive yet, have we? No. We're as free as we're ever gonna be right now, son. I think our fuel gauge is working. I put five more gallons of gas in at the house and we went from half a tank to three quarters. So I think we're good there. It's pulling 2% of fuel right now. What was that? We're pulling a pretty big hill. It's not pinging. It kicked down into third, that's good. I think we're good, Ralph. I see a little bit of smoke behind us. We gotta figure out what that oil leak is, huh? Just heard what I think is the fan contacting the shroud. Don't see me doing it now though. Did you hear it rattling? Yeah. Our speed on is working good now. Oh yeah. So as we're going 40, how fast do you think we can go? 70. There it goes into overdrive. So we got overdrive, we're good there. It's pulling 3% of fuel. We're gonna stretch our legs here. This is the fastest we've ever been in this thing. 60. 2,000 RPM and right at 60. I don't know if our converter's locked up there or not. Look at the coolant temp, 158. That's awesome. It seems really steady at 60, doesn't it? Yeah. 2,000 RPM ain't bad. Yeah. Is that smoke behind us? In the rear view mirror, it looks more hazy. I don't know if it's us or I'm crazy. to address don't we yeah is our transmission fan running yeah it's a b&m transmission cooler it's set up on a temperature controlled switch so anytime it's above 170 it kicks on so it's working yeah we got a pretty bad leak that's a bummer went from electrical issues to mechanical issues well no pew pews today we didn't buy nothing we noticed on the way here like if you give it a lot of throttle before it was like surging in and out yeah it's not doing any of that anymore so it's definitely learning more it may have also been a vacuum leak part of it you know all right let's see if we can get this thing back home we got another probably 30 minute drive to get home Woo. see how she starts 
spot on. And we're off. Oh gosh, there's a fruit stand. Your mom would never leave. So the way these things work, if you find a spot where it's running bad, and you just kind of hold it there, you'll feel it start clearing up and running better. And the more you drive it, the better it'll run, better it'll run. Unless you have a major problem. Like if you have a dead miss or something, it's going to throw off all the air fuel readings and it's not going to learn. It's going to actually do worse. But if your engine's running correctly, the more you drive it, the better it'll run. It's trying to pull 13% of fuel right now because something's not happening. We're basically going to get all these bugs worked out and be able to really do some stuff with this thing. Yeah, instead of just working on it. <laughs> yeah. We're still driving. We already passed where we turned to go to the house. We're headed the other way now. I just wanted to put some miles on it. Keep watching the learn percentage go down. So it's figuring things out. Staying at 159 degrees. Well, that's probably about far enough, isn't it, Ralphie? Yeah. Mom's gonna be worried sick about us. She's definitely gonna think we broke down. Just because she smoked on me, she's broke. <laughs> it looks so funny. Made it. Woo, how'd it go? Aside from our exhaust getting oil on it and smoking, it's good. I hear a fan or something going. That's a trans cooler going. Cool. I'll pull it back in the shop and we'll see what drips. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely engine oil dripping off that. Which obviously is getting on our transmission and everything else and causing it to smoke going down the road. Ah, man, that's a bummer. I wish it wasn't doing that right there. I was really hoping for smooth sailing with leaks and such. That kind of is the worst leak you can have. <laughs> we kept hearing something up here with this fan. It must be tweaking just enough to rub the shroud at some point, but... It doesn't seem to be repeatable every time. Mainly when mom's driving, it does it. You know. <laughs> that was a good test drive for sure. That went about a million times farther than it went last time. Let's exactly. talk to you. Got to figure out our oil leak, but maybe just maybe it's not too big of a deal. I hope not. You know, maybe I'll spray it off a brake cleaner once it's cooled down and see if we can figure out where it's come from. But it's nice to be able to finally drive this thing. I think I'm gonna be driving it back and forth to church and stuff for a little bit. Okay. Get some miles on it. Get it running better. What? What does that mean? <laughs> What's that mean? Oh, hey, I'm right huh? here. We're hungry. It's about dinner time, uh, isn't it? It is about dinner time. Are you ready to eat a vainilla no, for thank dinner? No, you. Not really. Why? Squeeze? No, well, I'm nothing. Gonna pass. <laughs> well, actually, maybe. But man, we appreciate you guys following along with this build. I know it's been a long build. There was a lot, a lot of work we did a lot of work. this thing. We put more work into this project than we have any other project car we've ever had. It feels Always. good though for it to finally be running Always. and driving. And we was doing over sixty. Get out of town! Did it feel like a boat floating down the road? No, it's actually not too bad. You know, if you rock the wheel, it does kind of crazy. But we were rolling 60, 65 down the highway. We we're going a long time, weren't I we? Know. I almost called you. I thought, no, it's okay. He had to call me. So. I told Ralph, he's like, Mom's going to think we broke down for sure. Yeah, for I sure. thought. And when he called me, I was like, okay, where do I need to go? Well, a big thank you to Reg Pro. This project would not have been able to get here without them. 
They have been a huge help with our channel. If you get a Rec Pro and use code SleeperDude, you'll get, I think it's 5% off your order. Also, a big thank you to Holly uh, for their help with this project as well. Terminator X to uh, kind of save the day on this deal. For sure. For us. I love having the GPS speedometer. You don't ever know if the factory speedometer is accurate, especially on older vehicles. You can put any kind of gauge you want on that thing. I love it. The fact that we've been able to do such a weird swap like this and never even open the laptop and just top it in. That's amazing. That's totally That's really amazing. neat. Did you enjoy driving it? It was, yeah. I mean, I was glad it drove. I was a little bit nervous, but it's still so tall. Yeah. Thank you to Curtis Mobile Driveline as well in Tarpon Springs, Florida. He built the transmission for this thing, gave us a deal on it. He did a really good job. Seems like yeah. it's working spot on. Hey, we didn't have any hot brakes or hot bearings when we came that's back good. that we could tell, so that's good. After driving it that far, are you guys excited about yes, getting very. closer and closer to finally being able to like camp in this thing? Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. We may have to like camp in the yard. I was say we can park it back by yeah. the pond. Flamping. We, we may glamp in the yard in this thing at some point. You can now get our merchandise at thesleeperdude.com. Go check it out. We got lots of different t-shirts. We got a few stickers. Stickers are free shipping. We do international as well. We really appreciate your support there. We're doing a $500 Holly gift card giveaway right now. So if you buy anything right now, it's going to put you in the runnings for a $500 gift card giveaway. This is the only second giveaway we've ever done. So giving away our, our gift certificate we won at the... Ford Fest at Holly. You can check out our second channel at Sleeper Sleep 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 Sleep. too. We do cool stuff on there. And you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Sleeper Sleep You got it. Ellie's dying for another one. We gotta get one to Rocky. You got any tricks? Huh? Shake. <laughs> she didn't she didn't even break eye contact <laughs> with me and she shook her hand. That's crazy. She's smart. Y'all just smart. sucked it down. Hey, I promise you, I cracked the RC Cola and Vania. I poured one out for my homies before all this started. But mom said not in the RV. No. I'll have to agree with her on this one. No. It's just too nice. Well, let's go see the animals, see how they're doing. Whoa. Oh, now y'all want to go to the field, huh? <laughs> all the time you want to stay in the shop. Now you want to go to the field. But I got a can of Vianas in my hand. Granny. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, she lost it. She couldn't see Her eyesight's well. failing. Yeah. Among other things. She's alerted to it now. There's only two left. We gotta save some for Rocky. Oh, he's already done. How am I gonna get it to him? <laughs> there you go, buddy. You gotta do better about helping Rocky. Yeah, you're gonna get cut out of the wing. He used right to here. always want to come in the shop. And here lately, he's always wanted to just hang out in the barn. With his girlfriends. Yeah. Can't just hang out with your girlfriend all the time. Sometimes you gotta work. No. Oh, whoa. Stink kicking up like dirt. Please. Give her some time. <coughs> oh, she said, don't touch my RC Cola. Lord. How about this? Comment below. Mini pig or wild boar? You let us know. And remember. Do you save and dodge enemies every seven miles? Yeah. Woo. Yeah, I got that. Ha, 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 ha,